Hi and welcome to our channel. Today we're diving into Structure by Tempo, a powerful project portfolio management app for Jira. So whether you're a project manager, an executive, business analyst or a team lead, Structure helps you visualize, track and manage your projects with ease. If you're wondering whether Structure is the right tool for you, by the end of this video you will know exactly how to leverage its powerful features to streamline your workflow. With countless solutions available out there, finding the perfect fit can be daunting. Save yourself time and money by reaching out to us. We offer free consultations to help you navigate your options along with paid services tailored to your specific need. Don't hesitate, let us guide you to the best solution. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss on any of our latest content. Now back to structure. In this video, we'll focus exclusively on Structure by Tempo, but stay tuned for future videos where we'll show you how to supercharge it with other powerful apps. Now, if you want to start using Tempo, all you need to do is go to the Atlassian's marketplace and install the app just like you would do with other apps. And once installed, you will find it in the apps dropdown. So I've already installed it and I will skip this step. When you open Structure, you will be redirected to this Getting Started screen and when you click Create a new structure, you will see two options to start with. So Structure offers two modes, the Speed mode for quick and simple setup and the Power mode for advanced customization and detailed control of your project hierarchies. So let's explore the Speed mode first. There are three steps to set up your project or projects in structure using the speed mode. So the first step is to select the scope of your structure. What do I mean by scope? Whether it will be a single project or if you want to create a portfolio, meaning a number of projects, all you need to do here is to select the projects you want to work with. So I will start with a single project. I have my demo project already set up and I'll click next to go to the second step. In the second step, you'll see that you can still change the projects that you've already selected. So you can go back to the first step. So this would be a filter that we will use. So if you're familiar with Jira, a project is a simple filter. In the second part here, you'll have the default hierarchy that structure will use. By default, it is the issues. And on the very top, we will have epic issue type and below the epic we will have the child issues the option selected is standard issue types so if you're familiar with the hierarchy in jira in the standard version that would be the epics child issues to the epic and just below would be the subtasks so out of the box you have three levels within the hierarchy however if you have jira premium or enterprise you can customize it and have additional levels above the epics or in between the epics and the standard issue type. So what can we do here? We can remove this level. We can also add filters to, for example, exclude issues that are already completed and focus on the remaining work or decide how we would like to sort our data. We will cover that in more details when we'll be exploring the power mode. If you want to add a level above or below the epic so hover over the space between the two rows and again you will be asked whether you want to create a level based on the issues or group by a field so when you select issues you will need to select what would be the child issues in that case structure uses links so based on the child issue link which we already used previously. So I will unselect it. But for example, I have another custom link that I've created is parent of, is child of. So I can also use this just to create a separate level within the hierarchy. What is the other option? It's the group by. And here I can select by which field value I want to group. So for example, if I have priority, which would be the high, medium, low as an example, it will create an additional levels with this hierarchy field values and underneath it will nest all the issues with that priority value. Let's hit continue and the last step 
would be to add the name of my structure, add a brief description and decide who you want to share it with. So you can share it with everyone or selected users, groups, a specific project role or decide to keep it private. I will share it with everyone and hit create. Now, as you can see, structure pulled in all the issues from my Jira and I have a basic hierarchy. Let's try to expand it. So the, on the first level, I have my Epic. On the second level, I have my priority. So it seems that all my issues within this particular Epic have a priority set to medium and I have one story just below the Epic. Let's expand all maybe and let's see if we have any other priority. Unfortunately, we don't have any other priority. So let's edit one of these issues. I will edit it in a separate tab and simply select a different priority. Let's set it to highest. And as you can see already, I have the two categories here, highest and medium priority. A few more words about the interface. When you're using the speed mode, the interface changes slightly. You'll have this button modify structure, which will open the pop-up that you've already seen that I've used when I was setting up my demo structure. The remaining features are the same. So now let's have a look at the power mode. When you select the power mode, again, you will need to enter the name. So let's call it power structure, add a description and decide who you want to share it just as I've done previously. So let's share it with everyone and let's hit create. I will be redirected to my structure screen. However, it is empty because I haven't decided which issues I want to pull in. So to do that, click on the add dropdown right here. And the term used here is generators. So there are some presets that you can use. If you don't want to define the structure from very scratch, you can insert issues or decide which issues from Jira will be added to your structure, extend the structure or add additional issues based on issues already existing in your structure filter or remove issues, group and source. So something that we, that we already did previously, but organized into all these categories. Now we can also start creating issues, Jira issues to be exact or structure specific issues, which are referred to as flex item. So let's see the presets first. And let's say I want to create a multi-project overview. So we have a template that we can use that will put the project on the very top, create items that would represent projects within my structure. Or you can use other commonly used templates such as Agile Hierarchy, which we created using the speed mode, the scrum backlog in which the parent or the top level item would be the sprint, or for example, status overview. If you want to view the status of all your work items, then the status would be the top level item. So let's select the multi project overview. And the first step here is to actually select the projects I want to work with. So let's select a couple of projects. Let's go with my demo project. Go genius. And let's say some sample data from the training. So I have four projects. Now I can decide what level of information I want to include. So right now I'm pulling only the epics. So it will be a high level overview. However, I can select uh, epics and uh, issues just below the epics as well as the subtasks. So let's select it and the uh, structure preview is shown on the side right here. So let's hit create and have a look at the hybrid. For some reason, not all the projects were included. So let me insert some additional projects and let's use the insert option. So or insert generator. So right now I can select the project that did not work. I did want to add my hybrid project as well as my go genius project. So let's hit create. And as you can see right now, everything was added correctly. So let's expand all of them. And as you can see, we have our epics, we have our stories. In case there are no epics, the tasks will be nested directly under the project item at the very top. Same applies to the last project that I've entered. 
All right, so far so good. So now let's talk a little bit about using structure. I can move items uh, using drag and drop, change the order here. However, since we have the order by gener or sort by generator uh, enabled, structure will throw an error and when I acknowledge it, it will revert the issue to the previous position. I can also change the order of the generators. Uh, however, keep in mind that some of them, in particular the group by and sort by, cannot be placed at the very top or at the very bottom. So again, if you try to move them around, you will receive a warning. And once you acknowledge it, structure will fix the order of the generators. Now, I think it's worth mentioning what differs structure from other tools available on the marketplace. One of the things that we really like is that you can display issues that have multiple parents or have a many to many relationship, uh, which adult tools do not really handle that well. So this is very useful in case you're, you're for example, generating a report or you're tracking requirements when the same test case can have multiple parents. Or for example, when you want to create a view by assignee and the same person works on multiple projects, that would be also uh, another use case. And also when you're tracking releases and a feature can be included in multiple releases. So uh, that's something that other tools do not handle that well, but Structure does a really good job in that case. Having said that, uh, let's move to the next feature that we also really like and let's try to customize this view a little bit. In the top right corner here, you can add a column or add a field that you'd like to, to focus on when you're creating, when you're looking at the report. Uh, now there are plenty of fields that you can add here. Uh, for example, progress fields, uh, for example, formula fields. So this is another uh, great field that other tools do not provide. So we'll be exploring that shortly. You can also add number, type of fields, text, dates, time and status. They are basically organized into Jira fields and tempo fields as structure integrates with other tempo apps. So let's add a progress field, maybe progress by status. Yeah, let's start with progress by status. So we we have two progress already added. Well, now I have one type progress, the other one, type progress, but they show different values. So this one actually uses time tracking while the other progress uses status field. So as you can see, depending on the data available in my Jira, these progress bars can show different values. You can customize how the information is presented and copy the values to a Jira field, which I think is very cool as you can have the data calculated by structure available no outside of structure on your Jira issue field. And that was added uh, this year, so uh, definitely feature worth checking out. I can also decide how this data is presented. So instead of progress bar, I can show percentage points, something that I also really like. Now, if you don't want to start manually adding all these fields, you also have the different views here, such as basic, entry, triage, planning. So let's give it a try. Now I have some of the fields added as columns for me, so I can further customize this view. Now I can also add filters to focus on specific data or create my own filters. Now I've already customized this view, so let me switch to my other structure that I created earlier. Okay, so as you can see here, I have a couple of projects in my portfolio. So actually three different projects. And now I've added the start and end dates. And a tip for you, whenever you want to update fields using this interface, make sure that these fields are added to your issue as screens for each of the projects. Otherwise, you will receive an error. So let's give it a try if I configure it correctly. Yeah, so I did manage to update the field. Otherwise, you will see a small red triangle in the top left corner of this cell uh, indicating that there is a warning and your Jira issue will not be updated in that case. So I've also added time tracking fields, a progress, the status, epics, as well as some flex fields, which are uh, available only in a uh, structure. So for my risks, I've added a uh, mitigation field uh, text type and I've added some uh, some reports for example time in status for this project so as you can see I haven't done much for this particular project uh, in a while now you can also add other fields available in structure but what I think is worth your attention is actually the formula type of field so I've added a 
formula for overdue uh, tasks. Now when I click on the edit column, you will see that it does require a formula to make it work. So what I did here, I used the end date field and compared it to the current date. Whenever the end date is earlier than today, I wanted structure to mark this field value as overdue and color coded red. Uh, when the time period between the end date and today is less than seven days, the color would be green and the notification due soon. And whenever it's more than seven days. In that case, I used a smiley uh, emoji and I should have a smiley emoji somewhere here. If not, nah, we can update the end date so that a smiley face appears. Let's save. There we go. Using these formulas is not that simple. However, within the documentation, you will find a lot of examples that you can use. And also since 2023, Structure improved this formula field so that it actually helps you create a, a correct formula. So that should make your life uh, way easier. However, still some coding is required. So if you don't want to spend uh, hours learning how to code and need help with with setting up your project portfolio management environment, feel free to reach out to us as we can offer uh, help in that area. Now, uh, going back to our structure, we covered the different fields, we covered the filters. Now there are also some other options here, such as the split view. So you can compare different structures. For example, do a comparative analysis when you compare two different structures of views side by side. And this is helpful. We're comparing different project timelines or resource allocation or simply progress across multiple projects and teams. Well, you can also have a high level uh, overview of your projects while on the other screen show detailed tasks and subtasks. And this will also help you keep an eye on the overall progress while diving into specific details as needed. Uh, or simply for multitasking, if you're managing multiple projects or tasks simultaneously, the split screen can help you keep track of the different activities without uh, losing the context. One last thing I wanted to show you is the structure gadget. So when you want to create a reporting dashboard and have all the information in a single place, you can use the gadgets. It resembles exactly what I created earlier. That means that you can have this combined with other reports or charts that you add to your dashboards. Very powerful feature and will definitely help you or your team to stay on track. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you want to learn more about best project portfolio management tools or specific use cases, we got you covered. Make sure to check out other videos available on our channel. See you next time.